functions. What is that? On one side, the TSH, other side, 3T4, and if, and, and, and look on that. If the TSH and T4, 3T4 are normal, then patient is euthyroid and, and forget that. If the patient having the low, uh, low T4, uh, 3T4 and higher TSH, then it is primary hypothyroidism. If patient having the free, uh, free T4 is high and TSH is low, then it is primary hyperthyroidism. If the patient having the both TSH and, and T4, free T4 are low, then it is secondary hypothyroidism, means defect lies in the pituitary, not in the thyroid gland, because treatment differs. If the patient having the both the uh, 3T4 and, and uh, TSH both are high, then it is the secondary hyperthyroidism. And here I will stress on subclinical hyperthyroidism and subclinical hypothyroidism because in pregnancy we, will, we need to, to intervene the subclinical hypothyroidism for the better outcome of the, uh, the pregnancy. So if the TSH is high, 3T4 is uh, normal, then it is called as a subclinical hypothyroidism, and in pregnancy this is important. Some non-thyroidal disease in, in which the 3T4 may be low, but TSH may be normal. And if the patient is on therapy, already on thyroid therapy, and then 3T4 may be high, TSH may be normal. So this is the nine square approach of the interpretation of the, uh, of the thyroid uh, in, uh, in, uh, in any condition, thyroid disorders. Now, what physiological changes occurs in the pregnancy? The free thyroid level remains with the normal range during the pregnancy, although total thyroid level are increased secondary to increased uh, uh, TBG. So, that's why we don't advise the total uh, T4, but we should advise the free T, uh, free T4 because in the, in the pregnancy the total um, uh, T4 may be increased but T and uh, free T4 will be normal. TSH decreased slightly in first trimester and, and the thyroid gland increased slightly in size during pregnancy. A thyroid gland may slightly increase normally in the pregnancy. Maternal thyroid volume may increase up to 10 to 30 percent in pregnancy, especially in third trimester. So you should remember three trimester, first, second, third. So we have to look uh, what things we have to look in first trimester, what we have to look in second trimester, what we have to do in third trimester. In the third, third trimester, why thyroid gland is increased in size because of increased blood, blood volume and extracellular fluid. And enlarged thyroid gland in isolation is not an indication for screening of thyroid disease if no other clinical relevant history, symptom or sign. It may be normal. TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone or thyrotropin decrease in early pregnancy. In early pregnancy, TSH may decrease. And increase T4 uh, because of estrogen stimulating a higher level of thyroid binding globulin that transport thyroid hormone in the blood. American Thyroid Association recommended that following the late first trimester, if local reference range are not available, then TSH level will be uh, uh, um, uh, 0.5 uh, micro unit per liter. After first trimester, use non-pregnant reference. After first trimester, in first trimester, you have to use these references, but in other condition, the normal TSH reference we can use. Maternal transfer, transfer of T4 to fetus, necessary for fetal brain development. And 30% of umbilical cord, TSH, T4 is uh, maternally derived. So it is maternally derived. And in first trimester of the pregnancy, thyroid gland is is, is it not developed so? Uh, so in the second and third, it is important. Maternal iodine requirement 
is different from the uh, uh, in the pregnant woman and lactating woman in pregnant woman 220 micrograms are necessary and lactating mother 290 uh, milligram, micrograms are necessary so this is the maternal iodine requirement in our sin province the hilly area district dadu district thata and in uh, in these areas thyroid disorder are very common and they are highly neglected because of iodine deficiency now first we we'll, let us talk about the hyperthyroidism remember one thing that in hyperthyroidism there are many causes one is the graves disease uh, uh, other is the plumbers disease a single toxic adenoma subacute thyroiditis pituitary tumors molar pregnancy now in pregnancy related we have to see these three things molar pregnancy metastatic th thyroid cancer ovarian uh, stroma ovary syndrome or dermoid cyst uh, we should detect and uh, we, we will be able to detect in the ultrasound in first trimester and then we can manage these patients in grave disease is the disease of young age so we will consider the grave disease in the in the pregnant lady uh, 20 to 40 years so most of the patients they have a grave disease but some of them are having the subacute thyroiditis 95% 95% of hyperthyroidism in pregnancy is secondary to grave disease and remember one thing if any eye sign then it is grave disease nothing else it is grave disease any eye sign it, and then it is grave disease and good pregnancy outcome can be expected in patient with good control so and thyroid the thyroid brood eye signs uh, uh, there there may be dermoethropathy so when these features are available you don't be confused this is the grave disease nothing in, in there's no any other uh, problem look on these eyes proptosis lid lag and also peritibial edema chemosis and thyroid dermopathy, uh, dermopathy thyroid acropathy and uh, hyperthyroidism if we will not treat then what will uh, what will cause it the fertility will decrease miscarriage will, rate of miscarriage will increase intrauterine growth retardation will be there premature labor will be there perinatal mortality will be become high poorly thyrotoxicosis uh, is uh, poorly controlled thyrotoxicosis may lead to the thyroid storm and we have really seen these cases in the gynae department and they have been misdiagnosed with some other uh, uh, eclampsia some other infections and their labor and delivery of these patients is not good so we have to treat the thyroid uh, hyperthyroidism earlier beta blockers because there are there are two common anti thyroid drugs that is the methamizol and uh, 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 ptu the ptu is safe in pregnancy although it classes the placenta but it doesn't cause uh, any harm to the to the child to the treatment goal for mild in hyperthyroidism we will not keep the patient hypothyroid we will keep mild hyperthyroid we will keep mild hyperthyroid because thyroid hormone is essential for the body growth and for the development of the brain so we will keep slight hyperthyroid uh, uh, hyperthyroid in these patient and grave disease like it is a immune mediated disease in pregnancy and uh, grave disease improves in the third trimester grave disease improves in the third trimester so we need to monitor the patient in each trimester first trimester second trimester third trimester even postpartum six month postpartum period and uh, so exacerbation of the grave disease will be in the first trimester and in the postpartum period and it may improve in the third trimester so we have to we have to look on the dose of the uh, of the uh, med medications neonatal and fetal thyroid toxicosis may occur because of trans uh, uh, placental passage of thyroid stimulating antibodies so any any ch ch child which is which has been born by thyrotoxic lady 
their child must be investigated. So now, talking about the hypothyroidism, this is the most commonly uh, common disorder uh, with the pregnancy. And even in our study, we have seen that hypothyroidism is causing more problem in, in uh, uh, menstrual, uh, menstrual disorders and even in other uh, uh, you see, mo mo morbidity uh, related to pregnancy. The postpartum, hypo this is the most common cause of the hypothyroidism. And secondary, neoplasm of the pituitary hemorrhage and for example, Sheehan syndrome. In Sheehan syndrome, there will be hemorrhage and that may lead to hypothyroidism. And then the tertiary hypothyroidism, uh, this is very rare neoplasms. So disease burden. 5% of the general population are subclinically hypothyroidism. They are not, they are subclinically hypothyroid, 5% of population. And 15% of all women, all women above the age of 65 are hypothyroid. But here we are dealing with the young age, so we will uh, look for the, uh, consider the 5% patients. Detecting subclinical hypothyroidism in pregnancy is highly essential. Highly essential subclinical hypothyroidism. I already told you because uh, um, in, in that we have to order for TSH and 3T4 routinely in our pregnant women at the, at the beginning of each trimester. At the beginning of each trimester and all persons age above 60 order for TSH. So these are the, these are the clinical features. I am not, not going in detail. Everybody is knowing the features of the hypothyroidism. And I, in particularly, I will talk about the reproductive system, infertility, menorrhagia, importance, and increased prolactin hormone. So th 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 that may lead to some problem. Now, and what mind knows the ICs? What mind knows the ICs? So in elderly women, men, postpartum women, they are having, uh, they having the thyroid, uh, thyroid problem. And uh, I'm not talking about these, I will, reproductively, arrest of pubertal development, reduced growth velocity, menorrhagia, amenorrhea, and, and infertility, and evolution, these are, the, uh, these are the features of thyroid failure. Now, hypothyroidism, untreated patient with hypothyroidism rarely conceived. First of all, they rarely conceive and carry a pregnancy uh, or carry a pregnancy. I remember one lady came to me that I have got no issue, please help me, treat me. I said, I am a physician, how I can help you? But she uh, insisted uh, when I examined her and I just uh, uh, performed the uh, deep tendon reflex ankle jerk, it was slow relaxing and really then I prescribed, I investigated her and I treated her and then she has the uh, uh, um, many, uh, the, uh, three, four kids after that and she's still, uh, so, still on my treatment. Treated hypothyroidism usually having no associated pregnancy complication in hypothyroidism. Some patient will require increased low, now, now listen on this. Already patient who's on hypothyroid and leothyroxine uh, and, and thyroxine therapy, may, some patient may require increase the dose of the thyroxine during their pregnancies. Monitor thyroid function test and I will take two minutes. Other clinically indicated times. And we are prescribing, gynecologists are prescribing multiple, multiple multivitamins. They interfere with the absorption of the thyroxine. So better to ask the patient to take the thyroxine early in the morning with the empty stomach so the, and they change the time of B complex and other, uh, in the other time, uh, in the other period, uh, uh, time of the day. Subclinical hypothyroidism is because of chronic autoimmune hypothyroidism, either, either it's a grave disease or inadequate replacement therapy for hypothyroidism. Our patient is on antidepressant, that is a lithium, for the depression, that, that is, these are the subclinical hypothyroidism. So what, how we should adjust the dose of thyroxine in the hypothyroidism? If the, if the level of the five, five to less than 10, then we have to give the levothyroxine 25 to 50 microgram. We will increase the dose 
uh, by ma not we will give the full dose from day one, but we will gradually increase the dose of thyroxine. Then if it is 10 to 20, then 50 to 75 uh, uh, microgram per day. If it is more than 20, then we may need the 75 to 100 microgram of thyroxine per day. Po and other thing, post postpartum thyroiditis. We have already, this is also autoimmune, and this is common uh, in a patient with a type 1 diabetes, uh, and a history of autoimmune disease or Hashimoto's disease. This is, and postpartum thyroiditis is a destructive autoimmune thyroiditis. First of all, it will cause the hypothyroidism, then followed by the hypothyroidism. And that is the, in, in these patients, the patient goes in, uh, in recur, uh, if the patient having the multiple recurrence, uh, uh, quick pregnancies, then there may be recurrence. So in these patients, just like a G, uh, gestational diabetes mellitus, we will advise these patients that please try to conceive with the broad, uh, big gap so that you should not suffer from this problem. 80 to 85 patient, a person or patient are having the positive antithyroid antibodies. Radioactive iodine is contraindicated in the pregnancy, but in first trimester you may give, or in postpartum period, if you want to uh, differentiate between the postpartum thyroiditis and grave disease, then it is necessary to differentiate between that. Because in grave disease, there is a high uptake. In, uh, in the postpartum thyroiditis, there will be no uptake of the iodine. So it can be help, uh, helpful for the management of these patients. Hi and hyperemesis gravidum, any lady who has got a hyperemesis gravidum, that they must be investigated for the th hyperthyroidism. Now, another important point I want to highlight. Any new thyroid nodule during pregnancy should be aggressively, treat, uh, aggressively investigated because it is most, most of the time it is malignant. Most of the time it is malignant. So, this is important. And uh, now, with the, what message we, you should take to your home, thyroid disease is the second most common endocrine disorder affecting the women of reproductive, reproductive age. This is the second most common cause. And we don't consider this. And that when untreated during pregnancy is associated with increased risk of miscarriage, placental, uh, placental uh, abruption, hypertensive uh, disorder, growth retardation. So current guidelines say uh, type 1 diabetes and autoimmune, any other autoimmune, then this must be investigated. Appropriate management results in improvement and good outcome. Women with hypothyroidism, levothyroxine is treated to achieve the serum th uh, TSH level less than 2.5 micro uh, international unit per liter. Normally we take it is 4. But in pregnancy, less, because we want to keep the patient little bit hyperthyroid, not hypothyroid. And uh, <coughs> postpartum thyroid is the most common uh, form of the postpartum thyroid dysfunction. And, uh, this, and this is very important. Thank you very much for listening to me and tolerating me. Thank you.